Hello there. Over the last few weeks, our officers have mentioned the Israelites' journey from captivity and slavery in Egypt to their arrival in Canaan. Interestingly, the Israelites encountered two similar major obstacles during their exodus. The first was at the start and the other was at the end of their journey, the obstacles being large expanses of water. Today, I would like to backtrack and concentrate on the first one. In Exodus chapter 14, God once again proved to the Israelites that he would be there for them. At the same time, God wanted to show the Egyptians how powerful he is. Exodus chapter 14 verses 4 to 9 explains that following the release of the Israelites, God hardened the Pharaoh's heart. The Pharaoh realised that by freeing the Israelites, Egypt had lost valuable slave labour. He summoned his forces, including a fast chariot army, and set off in pursuit to bring the Israelites back to Egypt. They soon caught up with the Israelites, who turned around and watched in terror as the Egyptian forces approached them. Behind them was a large expanse of water. There seemed to be no way of escape. In 2021, trying to chart the exact route of the Exodus is difficult, even at this early stage in the Israelites' journey. One reason being, the whole of the Nile Delta and the surrounding area, including the eastern lakes, has changed over the years due to sand drifting and changing water courses. The translators of the King James Version of the Bible confused it further by translating the original Hebrew term Yam Suf as meaning the Red Sea instead of the Sea of Reeds. Most Bible historians believe that Israelites crossed the Sea of Reeds to the north of the Red Sea, possibly at Lake Timash, the Red Sea being too far away and too wide. As the Egyptians approached, Exodus chapter 14 verse 11 tells us that Israelites cried out to God and said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Moses told the Israelites to stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring today. In February of 1882, the Edinburgh born Major General Alexander Bruce Tulloch of the British Army was a commander of the Welsh Regiment based in Egypt. He was engaged in surveying work on the River Nile Delta for the building of the Suez Canal. In scientific publications from the late 19th century, Major General Tulloch describes a natural phenomenon known as wind set down, which he witnessed taking place on Lake. Menzela. Here is a description of the event in Major General Tullock's own words. He's been questioned by Mr M. Rook, a reporter for a scientific journal. One day when I was surveying between Port Said and Kintara, a gale of wind from the eastward set in and became so strong that I had to cease work. The next morning, on going out, I found out that Lake Menzala, which is situated on the west side of the Suez Canal, had totally disappeared. The effect of the high wind and the shallow water having actually driven it away beyond the horizon, and the natives were walking about in the mud where the day before the fishing boats, now aground, had been floating. When noticing this extraordinary dynamical effect of wind on shallow water, it suddenly flashed across my mind that I was witnessing a similar event to what had taken place between three and four thousand years ago, at the time of the passage of the so-called Red Sea by the Israelites. Mr M. Rook asked, I should like to ask the present depth of Lake Menzala near Port Said. Tullock replied, it's only about five or six feet. Rook then asked, where was the water driven to? The Major responded, it was packed up to the northwest. 
Rook asked, could you see it in any way? Tullock replied, it was seven miles off. It had absolutely disappeared. Exodus chapter 4 verse 13 tells us Moses told the Israelites, Do not be afraid, stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. In verse 15, God tells Moses to instruct the Israelites to move on after Moses raised his staff and stretched his hand over the sea. When Moses raised his staff and stretched out his hand, we are told in verse 21 that a strong easterly wind blew the sea back, leaving a dry path for the Israelites to cross. The Egyptians chased after them. God has used his power to control natural forces. The result was similar to the incident described by Major General Tullock thousands of years later. After the Israelites had safely crossed to the other side, the winds dropped and the returning water engulfed the Egyptian army. An important lesson for us all is contained in the Israelites' experience. When we face seemingly insurmountable problems in our daily lives, we should follow the advice given by God through Moses. The first thing to do is pray for God's help and then stand firm and wait. Do not rush ahead, do not rush ahead blindly into difficult situations. If the Israelites had panicked and ran into the sea, they would have been lost. The key is to wait until God provides us with an answer before we move on. That's what the Israelites did and they survived. If we wait for God to respond to our prayers, he will help us and he will guide us. God will open up the way ahead for us. Let it be our motto. Pray, then stand and wait for God's help before moving on. Thank you very much for listening to me today. Thank you.